children can be a good thing or a bad thing, and we don't want too much or not enough. Just like baby bear's porridge, right? <laughs> Just right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, too much can increase the risk of bacterial infections and cancer, and it can even age us faster. And if an infant doesn't have enough iron, it can affect their memory and their learning, and it can even increase the risk of mental retardation. So who should have their iron levels tested? Everybody should have their iron levels tested, especially since maybe 5 to 10% of the population has the recessive gene for a disease called hemochromatosis. And what that means is it's iron storage disease. We store excessive amounts of iron. And so our levels of iron are too high. And in that setting, it causes problems uh, with free radical formation because there's a reaction between iron and, and oxygen that occurs inside the body that causes the production of a very powerful free radical. And we also uh, age, it, it, we age fast, but we also have the risk for infection and for developing cancer in higher amounts. Well, this is why people that have hemochromatosis have to go and have their blood let. So instead of having a blood transfusion where they're getting blood, they're letting it out. And that's because iron is stored in hemoglobin and hemoglobin is what's in red cells and that's what carries oxygen. So if you have too much iron in your system, all these things we're talking about happen and if you want to get rid of it, the only way we really know that you can do that is to do a, is a bloodletting. So, so it was uh, interesting about the bacteria because, you know, recently we did a fast track on other heavy metals. We were talking about um, amalgam fillings in uh -huh, our mouths uh -huh. and how they have mercury in them and how they have copper. If they have copper in them, that it can increase the risk of bacterial infections. Right. And now we're finding out that iron can do the same thing. Well, there's a war going on between microbes, cancer cells, and, and, the, and the human host. And that war is about who's gonna get the iron. So what happens in, in the case of uh, in infection is that our body makes a, a substance, a protein, that's called lactoferrin. And it's in lots of places in the body, like the intestinal tract, it's in the blood cells. Don't we get that from bacteria. mother's milk? You right. can get it from mother's milk as well, if, um, if mother is making it. And what it does is it binds iron avidly. So in this contest that's going on between microbes and cancer cells to sequester it, we're trying to stop it from being high because we don't want to have the problems we get into with either a bacterial infection that's getting out of control or a cancer. So we're doing the best that we can to lower levels of iron that are not available to those cells. And when that happens, then they can't do what they normally do. So for example, uh, a bacteria, if it doesn't have iron, so take a, an example of an E. coli microbe, it can't get into the body and stick to a place where it can cause infection. It's like you coat it with something that keeps it from being able to stick in, uh, in any area of the body that where the infection might want to take hold, and it can't. In the case of E. coli, it lowers it by about 10,000 times if we can get enough of the iron bound to lactoferrin and other tissues in the body. Well, let's talk about the relationship of iron and cancer and mm -hmm. iron and artemisinin, for example, because <laughs> the cancer cells like iron and they sequester it. So right. what happens? So when cancer cells get the best of us and they sequester the iron that they need to be able to grow, uh, they're full of iron, but our normal cells don't have nearly as much. So when you take a, a drug like wormwood, which is another name for artemisinin, it attacks the cells that have a lot of iron in it, and it causes the production of a lot of free radicals inside the cells that sequester iron. So it turns out to be a possible treatment for cancer that could be very effective. Uh, we know that uh, we've done a little bit of research on that, but a lot more needs to be done so that we can uh, get this out into the mainstream because this is a this is a, a, an approach that can't be patented, it's inexpensive, it's safe, and it probably works in a lot of people who have cancer, particularly those people that sequester lots of iron, like l people who have leukemias or lymphomas. They may sequester a thousand times more iron than a regular normal cell would. So in other words, the artemisinin converts the iron into a free radical and then it kills itself? Not quite like that, but yes, it's involved in a reaction that causes the production of uh, 
of a hydroxyl radical, which is one of the most powerful radicals, free radicals we have in the body, and then the cancer cell basically kills itself. We also have a fast track on artemisinin and on our website. Oh, you want to check that out. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one because it'll, it goes into detail about how it works. Okay, so if you have cancer, it sounds like it would probably be a good idea to eat a low... Uh, a low iron diet, like Maybe. not a lot of meat. Probably vegetarian would be Maybe. good. Maybe. Huh? It gets back to your first question, which says, who should have their iron levels measured? And the answer is everybody, but particularly people who have cancer or who have infection or people who you suspect might have this recessive gene for uh, hemochromatosis. So, so pregnant women need iron for their babies. In general, well, what happens if this woman has a problem with, with the recessive gene or the dominant gene for hemochromatosis? They're going to be in big trouble and you wouldn't want to give them iron, but I'd say 90% of women need iron because if they don't have enough, then the baby's brain isn't going to develop normally and you may run the risk of having a child with mental retardation. So just generally speaking, menstruating women and pregnant women probably need a little more iron than men That's and women right. that are postmenopausal. Exactly. And there's things to just be aware of because you don't want to have too much iron is like not to cook in an iron skillet mm -hmm. unless maybe you're pregnant right. or you're menstruating well, women. But you need to know. You just need to know what your level women is. Might Think twice about right. it, yeah, depending on what the level is. So the bottom line here is measure your iron levels and see what they are. Oh, and check your vitamin supplements. If you're taking a, vit a multiple vitamin, you don't want, you, well, you want to know if there's iron in it or not. So. Well, in general, for postmenopausal women and for men at any age, iron is not a good idea. But if you've got a problem with infection or you have cancer, giving a prescription for iron is just uh, something that's going to flare that those problems and make it worse. Or an infection. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So the importance of iron, big time. It's got to be, like we said at the beginning, it's got to be not too much, not too little. It's got to right. be like baby bear's porn.